Welcome and aloha. I'm Mark Schlav, the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going across the sea of life and law and talk with Levi Ho'okano, the new president of the Hawaii State Bar Association for 2021. Levi joined the bar in 2006 and he's always been involved in various aspects of the Hawaii State Bar Association. I've asked Levi to discuss his background, his role as the president of the Hawaii State Bar Association, recent events in Hawaii and the United States, and the future of the legal profession. And first of all, I mean, that's a lot of to, to talk about. Uh, welcome. Good to see you, Levi. How are you? Good to see you, Mark. Um, let's start with why did you become a lawyer? How did that you know what how, how did that happen and is there anything in your personal or family background that motivated you to the legal profession uh thanks for having me mark um you know honestly i did not have any kind of previous experience in the law uh, after college uh after undergrad i went to loyola marymount university for undergrad and then uh, came back home to get my master's at uh, university of hawaii in public administration and um during that program there was a section where we covered um, the law, uh, a module on the law, and uh, the instructor was very inspiring uh, about how the law works and uh, what you can what you can accomplish through the law. And so uh, that, that instructor that was uh, Jerry Gubin, who, oh, okay. who yeah, sure. taught that section, and uh, it it started the process of me looking into uh, going into and learning more about the law. I spoke with some of my financial aid advisors for the school, and they encouraged me to take the LSAT, talk, walk me through the process, and the rest is history. I, I applied only to UH. I figured if I was going to go to law school, it's going to be at home or uh, not at all. Uh, so that was kind of the beginnings of everything, and I, one of the best decisions I made. I really enjoyed it. So you kind of got into law through another uh, educational uh, goal, and you got interested in it. And now, are you you're practicing law? What kind of law do you practice? Uh, so right now, I'm the chief of client services for the for the army uh, in Hawaii. So I oversee three different offices for the office of the staff judge advocate here. Uh, so I have my client. Well, within the client services office, we have our legal assistance office. And in that office, we handle family law, uh, landlord, tenant, estate planning, um, and military administrative matters, all civil stuff. We do not handle any kind of criminal matters. And we assist soldiers, uh, their dependents, and retirees. And not just, not just Army uh, soldiers. We also assist uh, Navy personnel, Air Force personnel, if they come in for assistance as well. And then we have our Special Victims Council office where we assist victims of domestic violence or sexual assault, sexual harassment, and we help them to navigate through the uniform code of military justice process, uh, walk them step-by-step step along the way, making sure that their rights are preserved throughout the entire process. And then I also have my tort claims division where we handle army claims. Wow, so, I, and that might explain why when I went to your law firm website the other day i saw this notice up there a be beautiful beach scene but then saying that basically you're not taking any new clients you're currently at service with the department of army now how how did you get involved with the army i mean it, uh, that doesn't seem i mean you went to law school i mean you, you your your path your voyage across the sea of law has been kind of you you went off in different directions now how did you get to the army so uh i grew up knowing about the army because both of my grandfathers uh served in the army in world war ii um one my japanese side uh grandfather he served in the 442nd uh in europe and then my Hawaiian grandfather served in the pacific and so i grew up knowing that they served in the army um and they didn't really speak about it much but i knew that it that it was there and in high school, so I went to Kamehameha schools for high school. And back then we had a mandatory 
JROTC program for all males. Um, right. So for two years, we had to participate in the JROTC program. And that's where I really got to know kind of the ins and outs of basics of the Army. Uh, you know, it's, it's JROTC, so it's not fully uh, grueling program as opposed to going to actual basics. But that's where I really got to learn about the concepts and the, um, the background and history of military service. So after law school, I decided to commission with the Hawaii Army National Guard as a judge advocate. So in 2009, I commissioned as a first lieutenant, uh, went off to my basics classes in 2010 to become a judge advocate for the Hawaii Army National Guard. And during that time, I took an active duty tour with the 25th Infantry Division up at Schofield uh, and served three years, just about three years on active duty up here. Uh, and that really opened the door to serving as a DA civilian, Department of the Army civilian here, which is where I currently sit. And with, when you were on active duty, where did that take you? Were you just stationed here in Hawaii? Or just stationed here in Hawaii. Hawaii. I see. I was just stationed here in Hawaii uh, with the with the 25th uh, up at Schofield, so it wasn't a deployment or anything. Um, I did do a short tour down in Kwajalein Atoll uh, mm -hmm. in Micronesia uh, for a couple of months to advise a garrison commander out there. Uh, that was a very interesting uh, experience because not anybody can just anybody can go to Kwajalein, and uh, very interesting issues and. Uh, way of life out there. And and so then, I mean, I, I can see how different things have come up in your life and have had you going towards different areas. How did you get involved with the Hawaii State Bar Association? I mean, I understand all, 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 all lawyers uh, right. are members, but I've seen you a lot with the Hawaii State Bar and various activities. How, how did that happen? So, okay, so the, the, the blunt answer is that I was kind of middle of the pack, upper middle of the pack of uh, my law school class. Um, definitely wasn't an academic standout, but I was, I was doing all right. But so in order to um, kind of help myself along the way for professional development, I want to get involved in some of the activities that lawyers get involved in. Um, so while a student, I got to know Lynn Flanagan, who was the executive director of the bar at the time. Um, I had great mentors in, in Lynn and uh, Carol Mon Lee, Lori Tochiki were the associate deans of the law school at the time and really got to know the law legal committee while still a student. And I, I liked what they did, some of the uh, events that they put on, some of the programs that they did. So I knew I wanted to be involved somehow with it. And uh, after graduation, got to know the Young Lawyers Division. Uh, some of my classmates became members of the YLD and on their board of directors. And so when a vacancy opened up on the YLD board, they asked me to step in and serve and fill that vacancy. And from there, I just continued on serving on the board, eventually becoming the president in 2011, I think it was. And um, just kept up the involvement. After Pat Maoshimizu came on as executive director, uh, she took a chance, called me up and asked me if I want to work for the bar as the programs director. So I thought that was a great opportunity to stay involved and kind of meet as many people as I could in the legal profession through that position. It was a great opportunity. I'm glad she took a chance on me and uh, just want to continue serving. And, and it sounds also like what you're saying is relationships are important uh, because I hear, I hear everything you're talking about is relationship driven. You're talking about people that have influenced you and given you opportunities. So that's that's probably is that advice for young lawyers? Is that what you tell them? I, that's that's exactly what I, what I tell them. That's a, you picked up exactly right on it, Mark. And um, you know, Hawaii. You're familiar with this on how small Hawaii's legal community is. Mm, right. Um, you know, we all basically know each other in some capacity or another, either personally or professionally, um, by reputation. And I think it's very important to build those relationships and to maintain them because we're gonna see each other all the time um, across the table, um, on the same side, on different sides. And I think it's important that we maintain those, those relationships. 
and, and foster them and build them. And I think the young lawyers should uh, get into that practice to, to get to know each other. That sounds like real good advice. Uh, I believe it too. That's, that's advice I, I give law, young law students and young lawyers too. I like it. Um, now, you became president of the bar and uh, you were president for this year. And you recently sent out a message from HSBA president Levi Ho'okano. And I, I, I want to read it. And then I want you to talk about it, why you did it. Your, your message was sent out on January 7, 2021, about the actions yesterday by the riotous group at the US Capitol. You said, the actions yesterday by the riotous group at the US Capitol runs contrary to our freedom to peacefully protest and assemble. Constitutional protections and procedures are a delicate fabric that we, as citizens and especially as lawyers, must uphold if democracy is to survive. This is a time for all of us to come together to work towards building a more perfect union through the rule of law and a fair and impartial judicial process. As president of the HSBA, I ask that you join me in condemning the actions of those yesterday at the US Capitol and work to improve our community by working together to settle any difficulties we may face in a civil manner. Out of one, out of, out of many, one. Out of many, one. Okay, why did you do that? Why did you send out this message? What were you trying to convey? And what did you mean by out of many, one? What, what, is, what are you doing here? You know, I, when, when the events unfolded on January 6th at the Capitol, uh, I was watching it on the news live and I, I couldn't believe what was going on. Uh, that this is what's happening here in the United States. And I felt it was important to send the message to our membership um, that as lawyers, we have a role to play in ensuring our democracy, the process of our democracy um, is protected. And I did struggle with, with the words to use um, to convey that message because um, as a mandatory bar association, we have some restrictions on what we can use membership dues for. And we can't take any kind of political or partisan um, ideological stances. Um, so I want to be sure that the statement was politically neutral, but that it conveyed the message that we need to play our part to ensure the process is done correctly uh, within the confines of the law within the bounds of the law, because it's it's so easy to unravel. Um, you know, it, we're, we're self-regulating when it comes down to it, and we need to make sure that we're following the process and we're ensuring that our clients follow the process and we, we have a role to, to play in protecting the, the democratic process. Well, you, you felt it was important to send that out, obviously. I mean, you sent it out the day after, and obviously I can tell that you had, you know, you, how am I gonna approach this what you, is what you were thinking. And, and you, but you decided to do it. So, I mean, you felt strongly enough that this was important to get it out there. Yes, I, I absolutely did. Um, you know, I talked to uh, some other people about, about the message before it went out, uh, just to be sure that what I was saying, um, adequately conveyed how how tough it is to uphold the rule of law um, to make some tough decisions and to stand up for something that i think is important um i did most of the, i did receive some feedback after that message went out uh, overwhelmingly positive a lot of people said hey thank you for for sending that out really appreciate it um of course as lawyers we are bound to get an array of um, opinions on things that we do, but overwhelmingly it was it was positive. Um, people who are appreciative of sending it out. The uh, National Conference of Bar Leaders and Bar Executives, I think they compiled a website of all of the bar associations across the country that have issued statements about um, the events on January 6th. It, it wasn't just us that, that decided 
Okay. So, so we, you, there were other bar associations doing similar, uh, sending out similar messages. And, and at, the, at the end of yours, you say out of many, one. Now, tell, where did that come from? What were your thoughts? Why did you say that? Um, so, you know, it, it comes from the e pluribus unum, uh, you know, the motto. And I thought it was important because we're so diverse. Um, lawyers, all of us come from varied experiences, backgrounds, uh, you know, grew up in different areas. And we all take different positions, but when it comes down to it, we're all here to uphold the judicial process, the rights of others, and we all have a role to play. Uh, so when it comes down to it, all of us have a goal of upholding due process, uh, the Constitution, and ensuring that we play our role correctly in um, a democratic society. Okay. Now, you may have... We may have some questions coming in uh, from viewers. A giant mob has already formed at the Washington Monument. Are you scared? That's the question. <laughs> um, I, I am not. Um, and the reason why I'm not is because we have a large number of our um, brothers and sisters in the National Guard who are stationed and uh, deployed to Washington, D.C. to protect the peace uh, in conjunction with civil authorities. Um, I think at the, at the heart of it that democracy and um, the rule of law will survive. Um, I know it can seem a little bit difficult being completely opposite end of the country uh, from where all of that is taking place. Um, so I am not scared but I'm cautious, def definitely cautious uh, in those situations. I know that we've got about several hundred from our own Hawaii, Hawaii National Guard uh, who is going out there to assist with the uh, civil authorities there. And so I wish and, them the best. And, and you have faith in, you, you, you are involved not just in law, but in the army. And so you, you kind of have faith in both, is what I hear you saying. Faith in both lawyers, and our military, that they'll stand up for democracy. Is that what you're saying? Uh, they'll stand up for doing what's right. Um, you know, in the military, we have to follow the lawful orders of those appointed above us. And as officers, we swear allegiance to the Constitution um, and not to an individual, individual person. The Joint Chief of Staff, all of the armed services issued a joint statement uh, emphasizing that. I think that was really positive for them to do that. I think it was important for them to remind all of us that that's what we're there to do. Uh, and I have to be clear that my statements are not on behalf of the army. Um, these are just Levi speaking. Right, right, of, of course. Now, um, is there anything yet you wanna to add to your statement, to, you, to, to the message? Anything more you would like to say uh, while you have this opportunity or is, is your message pretty clear? I, I thought I thought it was pretty clear, but uh, you know we all have diverse uh, viewpoints, and the beauty of our system is that we can express them, uh, you know, without fear of being imprisoned for our viewpoints uh, like that. And and now, your your statement is is that the position of the Hawaii State Bar Association or of you as president? That that I think was as me as president. Um, you know, because of the, I, what I felt was the urgency of getting a message out, um, it wasn't run by the board uh, prior to it being issued. Okay. Now, let's talk, I mean, where, where, where what, what do you think, you're, you're, you're speaking in hopeful but cautious tones about the future of the United States. Um, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts about... Um, What's happened and where are we going? I mean, you, you, you're, you're cautious, but where are we going? Where are we going with this? And what is the role of lawyers and our bar association specifically? But where, where, where do you think we're going? You know, I, I, I honestly have no, I, you know, I can't predict the future. And, but I, I do believe that, you know, democracy will continue. The United States will continue on. Um, 
that we will persevere. Uh, and the lawyers, we're here to uphold the rule of law, whether it's um, you know prosecution or defense. Uh, we all have a role to play. Um, you know, John Adams uh, famously defended the British after the Boston Massacre because it was important to, if we were to have a rule of law, sometimes you have to take the unpopular positions to defend those to uphold their rights. And that's what makes it uh, a good system, a great system, and uh, a more perfect system. Not a perfect one, but we're working towards that. And here in Hawaii, what is the role of the bar and lawyers? I mean, what, what is the position of the bar association and what is the role of the bar association? And then where do lawyers fit in? So, you know, the, the bar association, we, we're not a political organization. We're not, we don't um, advocate for ideological viewpoints. So our role is to ensure that on an administrative level, um, the lawyers have opportunities to um, do some public service, uh, some pro bono opportunities, um, get educated on various areas of the law through the continued legal education program, and um, serve the public, better the judicial process. Uh, a lot of it comes through with, with judicial nominees. The Bar Association takes an evaluation position to assist the judiciary in evaluating judicial candidates. Uh, or for or for retention of of judges, you know we're we're more for the administrative side of things as an association as a whole. Uh, but the individual lawyers, I mean, we're all there to to assist our clients to navigate the judicial system, allow access to justice, access to the courts, so that they can preserve or enforce their rights as as uh, they need. You know, I don't think anybody could have ever foreseen that we'd be talking about these issues. Uh, and, you know, you became president of the Hawaii State Bar Association and has a lot of uh, upbeat things you do. I mean, uh, uh, a lot of uh, fundraising for various uh, good causes, and it's a positive type of position. Who could have thought, Levi, who could have thought that we'd be talking about these potential problems? Now, what are your plans and hopes and aspirations as the Hawaii State Bar Association president for this year? We're, 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 what are your thoughts in that respect? So there's there's a, um, a couple of things that, that I want to focus on this year. Uh, support for our judiciary uh, is going to be is important. Um, you know, the, the judiciary budget is, is going to be important too so that we can keep courts open uh, throughout the COVID pandemic. Uh, making, sh making sure that judiciary programs are funded to assist the public. Um, I think support for our judiciary during the legislative budget process is going to be uh, a priority. And I think, I hope that all of our members can voice their concerns if they have any for themselves or for their clients, especially who need access to the courts uh, during, during the year. And uh, the other things that I want to focus on, of course, is part of the, the fundraising because a number of the bar association programs are funded through uh, our fundraising efforts, uh, which we were not able to do last year because of COVID. Uh, we weren't able to have our traditional bar association dinner fundraiser, uh, which helps to fund these programs uh, that allows access to justice or teaching moments for the public. So this year, I hope to explore alternative ways of conducting fundraisers, uh, online sign and auctions or other programs where we can raise some funds for next year's um, programs. The other thing I want to do is focus on participation with our neighbor island members. Uh, I practiced law on the big island for about three or four years. And I know how it can be um, when you're on the neighbor island. Uh, sometimes it seems like not everything trickles down to you. So I want to work with our neighbor island, our associations, our neighbor island members, to ensure that we're getting them the programs that they need and the services that they require uh, out there as well. And lastly is leadership development. I uh, wanna focus on working with our young lawyer members to develop a passion for leading either this organization in the future or a section or bar related, uh, law related organization or community service organizations that they're interested in. 
Uh, so leadership development is definitely going to be a priority with uh, the Bar Association's Leadership Institute, uh, which is a great program for lawyers from three to 15 years of practice to learn more about leadership techniques and styles within their legal profession. And so I, I guess, and, and most of this stuff you'll be doing virtually, I, I guess, for this, uh, for the present and foreseeable future. Uh, and are, are, you, are you mostly doing Zoom meetings and that type of thing? I mean, are, are, you, are you, any chance you're gonna go over to the neighbor islands or is that not? You know, I, <laughs> yeah, all of our meetings are still, are being conducted over Zoom. Um, you know, last year, Greg Fry, you know, he, he really started to have to pioneer uh, alternative ways for us to meet, alternative ways to administer programs. Uh, so he, he laid the, the tough groundwork. Uh, all I have to do is continue on with what he's doing. So he definitely did the, the heavy lifting for the Bar Association last year. So I really appreciate his work in that. I'd love to be able to go out to the neighbor islands to, to meet with people in person, but, you know, we have to do our part to prevent the spread of COVID and do what right. we can. So for the and time right, being, it's going to be virtual meeting. Yeah. And right now, uh, none of us can really see the future, as you said. Uh, if there's any way we can help you uh, here at uh, ThinkTech or on my program, Law Across the Sea, please let me know. Definitely. Uh, we, have, we, we have a minute left. Are there any closing comments that you'd like to make to lawyers, to Hawaii State Bar Association members? Uh, just thank you for the opportunity to serve all of you. Uh, the opportunity to the, your trust that you've placed in me to to serve in this position. I think it's an honor to to serve as president of the Hawaii State Bar Association, and I look forward to working with everyone. Look forward to meeting as many people as I can through this process and assisting as many people in as many programs throughout the process. If there's any questions for me, uh, feel free to reach out, um, and I look forward to to serving. Now, um, just. Going on that, if people want to get a hold of you, how did how did they get a hold of you through the bar association? Is that the best the, way? Directly through the bar association is the best way. Okay. Yeah. Hsba.org. All, right. All right. Well, uh, Levi Ho'okano, I want to thank you so much for being my guest today and for talking about different issues that we're facing in these very strange times. And uh, look forward to uh, someday <laughs> getting together in person. And yes, Mark. I've known, you, I've known you a long time, Mark. I really appreciate it. Uh, talking with you. Okay, so uh, we're we're pal for now. Aloha. Thank you very much, Levi Ho'okano.